Hey everybody, welcome to another episode here on Arbite U. We are joined by a very special guest today. We have Lena Levine, like Adam Levine. I don't know if you're related though. Yes, my, my celebrity husband, <laughs> he doesn't know about it. So, uh, founder of Four Coda. All right. So thanks so much for joining us, I appreciate it. And uh, we're gonna be talking about voice UI and UI UX today, right? Because that's what yes. we specialize in. Absolutely, absolutely. Cool. Um, for anyone that's watching, can you give us a little bit of a background on who you are, what you do, and how you got started? Definitely. Uh, so my background, I'm coming from the technical background. Started as a web developer myself about 10 years ago, so I've been in the industry for a while. Uh, and over the years, my experience really um, evolved into the kind of multidisciplinary uh, experience from, you know, including UX, UI design, uh, I also uh, um, also business experience and strategy, so that's currently kind of like what I bring to the projects I'm involved with with my team, uh, overseeing the creative direction, business strategy to make sure that whatever you know digital products um, that we design in, uh, that we take into account all the stakeholders, users, company, founders, internal stakeholders to make sure that the products that we build in. Um, you know, delivering on those user and business objectives. So, okay. And what kind of problems does your uh, business solve? So, um, variety of, pro of problems. Uh, companies come to us with different challenges, right? Some of them want to grow and scale faster. Some of them want to save money. Let's say maybe they're doing a lot of, you know, paper, using a lot of paper internally and they're trying to digitize their processes, right? So we um, kind of look at the company, uh, you know, holistically and trying to identify those pain points and um, uh, put together the best design and technology solution to help them. So, I mean, you hear UI, UX, it's always in the same, you know, everyone always says UI, UX, so I think some people right. just think they're the same thing. Right. So, um, what is UX, what is UI, how are they different? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a very good question. Um, so. Definitely, um, those terms are very close together. So UX stands for user experience, UI for user interface, and um, in reality, those two do not exist without each other. Um, typically, so UX, um, UX and UI, they require two different skill sets when designers work on the projects because UX is responsible for the overall user experience, how users interact with the whether it's you know digital product, digital service, even the physical product, um, you know the user journey through that, uh, let's say the web application, and UI user interface is any visual elements that users interact with, the buttons, screens, anything that they see, and, you know, the, the look and feel of the app. Awesome. And so, why should businesses care about or invest in the UX UI design? Yes. Um, so. Businesses, um, I mean, I see more and more businesses these days, um, you know, getting more educated about investing into the good um, design, uh, trying to understand the importance of it just because, you know, everything these days that we interact with, right, though, a, a, lot, of, a lot of products move into the digital space. So, and uh, digital services products are an extension of your brand, right? So let's say you want to make sure that um, experience that users get online is really, uh, um, you know, really well represents your brand. And you know, if if your mission, if you if you stand for really caring about your customers, if that's what you're trying, the message you're trying to send, but your product sucks, <laughs> right? It's you, you know the you you're not going to build that customer loyal your loyalty, the customer, um, the the brand awareness. So. Uh, so businesses start seeing more and more value in investing into the good UX UI and because uh, um, it um, helps to increase the brand loyalty, helps to increase the user retention, um, just build overall better user experience, make sure that the you know, customers are delighted by interacting with the app or the website and then the, uh, you know, having that uh, or, you know, thinking about the design is not just the phase of the project, but it's really uh, a change in the mindset because uh, you got to look at the business and the processes and the user flow as a whole as a big picture and see how you can, you know, improve it at every steps when the user interacts with your company or the product, whether it's just 
they have seen it for the first time, you know, maybe come and find it on the website, or uh, during the onboarding process while they learn in the how to use it. So those are a lot of different friction points mm -hmm. that users can uh, encounter. So we want to be mindful about that user journey and uh, um, you know how can we delight them at those different stages of their life cycle. Yeah, it's like. I feel like for a user, if, if you have a good, if there's a great user experience, you, you don't even realize that you're interacting with the UI. It just should almost Absolutely. be natural. Absolutely. It's like Amazon, like you go on there and right. it's just second nature, like, oh, that button's supposed to be there. You just like mind automatically right, right, goes right. there. Yeah, there is a joke uh, saying that, uh, well, design it is it, just it's like a joke. If you have to explain it, then yeah. you fail. <laughs> <laughs> So we want to make sure that uh, you know users don't have to think how to use something; they have to be very intuitive for them, uh, and that's the job of the you know both UX and UI designers to you know work closely together to make sure that it all flows smoothly as yeah as users navigate. And sometimes you like like you said the you know Amazon even the one click purchase. I mean mm -hmm. it's such a genius idea just to make it easier like to reduce that friction, the purchase friction, right, and reduce the number of steps that users need to take to buy something. Mm -hmm. So they reduced it from maybe like three different steps, adding product to the cart, filling out the information, hitting that submit button to just one click. And it's just like such a uh, mindless activity that um, I, didn't, I don't have the data off the top of my head, but I know that they sales after that. Yeah, genius for them, dangerous for us. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. I know. Especially that's me and books. If I go on Amazon and I'm just like, okay, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> bye, 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 bye. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. Um, I used to. So I find myself noticing this stuff now, like mm -hmm. that you normally wouldn't have noticed with a lot of things. Like, I don't know. Like, before, I used to help with the marketing here, so I'll, I would look at like after doing that, I start looking at billboards and like paying attention to them or listening to radio ads. Mm -hmm. And now with like the UI UX, now that we're paying attention to that here, like I'll notice myself when I'm using different software, like critiquing it. Yeah. And I'll be like, oh, this just sucks. I would never use this. And before I would just use something and like, maybe it would be like buying something online and the experience was so terrible that I just wouldn't even buy it. Right. I would just leave. Do you like, do you find yourself doing that? Like oh, kind of critiquing stuff? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and uh, it just comes with the, comes with the experience, right? Become, because you are now educated and you understand mm -hmm. the, um, kind of the philosophy, the design philosophy, design thinking behind the user interfaces. So when you look at something, you see what can be improved and you know what could have been done better. But regular, you know, the average consumer would not know those, mm -hmm. uh, or just like wouldn't know about it. Uh, and that's you know where a lot of frustrations might come up, where they trying to add the product to the shopping cart, right? And well, like even sign up and the designers did not think about the proper or maybe like error reporting mm -hmm. uh, or notification systems to uh, just let the user know what their next step should be and what they should fix uh, when they fill out the form and it just like can cause a lot of uh, frustrations and then like or bounce rate of the website so mm -hmm. uh, yeah it's definitely uh, interesting to be able to put yourself both in the user shoes and also yeah in the designer shoes. So and that's actually what the designer is supposed to do, right? They right. have to they have to understand the users better than the users know themselves. Yeah. yeah. So to put you on the spot, this one's not a pre rehearsed uh -oh. question, but um, <laughs> do you when you do this and like, you know, in your own daily life you're dealing mm -hmm. with software, like do you find do you see a mistake that like people are making all the time? Like mm -hmm. a commonality maybe across the board? Commonality? I would say not um, communicating um, clearly enough the expectations of the user. Mm -hmm. For example, when they like registration process, so like especially with forms, um, and a lot of happens like in the fintech banking industry, mm -hmm. right? Um, just like actually the other day, I tried to uh, create a line account with a local local bank. Not going <laughs> to mention any yeah. names, and it's just like the what they've been asking me the information to fill out in the form was confusing because they asked me to like the form was um, requiring to fill out the business address but it sounded like they were asking for the personal information so i had to call the support because like the registration didn't go through yeah. I had to call the support they're like oh yeah you didn't put the right information and i was 
I, I, I was frustrated as a user and as a, you know, uh, professionals, like, but, you know, you guys not explicitly asking for the right information on the website, and I know it wasn't the fault of the support person, but I was like, okay, these uh, things could have been, you know, this whole conversation, the time could have been saved, the my frustration could have been saved, so just by even just like walking through those steps yourself and like trying to look at it with a fresh eye yeah. and see what questions or challenges we really have. Yeah. Yeah. So well now there's a new dimension starting of where UI and UX is gonna be important. That's voice yeah. enabled UI. Yes. So it's been a it's actually relatively new, but I guess it's it's been around for a while. I mean, you know, we phones there's that, you know, you, everyone's called into that call center and they make you talk to the to the IVR, right, right, and you're screaming into your phone, customer service, customer <laughs> service, and it's not very good. But um, can you tell us a little bit about that? How it's maybe evolved over time, and like, yeah. what what can people expect from it? Yeah, yeah. So, um, voice voice skills is definitely definitely hot industries. Um, you know that that's something that we also um, you know shifting towards internally offering those services to our customers. Um, and voice is definitely very. Um, it's still brand new, even though you know Siri has been around for for a while now. Mm -hmm. uh, but with the uh, home devices like Alexa, Google Home, uh, now it's starting getting more popularity. I think current volume of Google search using the voice is around twenty percent. So and it's steadily growing. Mm -hmm. So it's really um, you know in the next five ten years will it will continue to grow as users shift uh, away over like away from the screen interactions towards the voice, just because it's more convenient, uh, especially when you're, you know, your hands are occupied, driving, working out, cooking. Um, and and then also, um, so it's also, uh, you know, since we're getting more and more screen fatigue, that's also like one of the reasons why users start shifting towards the voice. Um, and then, um, um, I mean, the opportunities with voice are endless, um, with the devices, even just like, you know, like your, um, um, like the, the watches, the, you know, the home devices becoming more and more, more ubiquitous. Um, users start getting more and more accustomed to using those uh, to like find different information. Mm -hmm. And right now, um, if you look at the data, like a lot of the searches that people do through their home devices is asking general questions, um, asking about weather and news, directions. Um, I personally love to ask about like, different jokes. Yeah. So <laughs> I do have both Alexa and Google Home, and Alexa is way more superior in terms of telling jokes versus Google Home. So uh, Google, get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they have like five jokes that they keep rotating. I'm like, oh, disappointed. I know they sell <laughs> jokes. So I'm gonna start doing. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get one for the office. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's great. So, what are uh, the challenges and advantages of voice UI? Um, so, def definitely plenty of advantages. Um, so, uh, voice UI kind of like expands that. Um, you know, like t takes the accessibility to the new level. Um, just because it's you know already you know voice native, voice enabled, really um, kind of creates those or, or, or reduces the frictions for people with visual impairment, right? So uh, finding the information by using the voice is so much easier than trying to navigate the you know uh, screen um, or s screen interfaces. Um, also for people with audio, like the hearing impairment. Also, just like being able to control the volume on the devices, making it louder is important. Um, providing the, you know, just like being convenient is definitely a great advantage. Um, and for businesses, it's a great time to get, um, you know, it, it, the businesses that want to stand out and uh, um, also, you know, continue building their customer loyalty and the brand awareness, uh, definitely should consider and look into uh, getting on the um, Alexa, you know, skill store, or even just optimizing their websites for the voice search, because you know, 20% of the search volume using voice is a huge number of people. And uh, for local businesses, like you know, me being at home and searching for the like local pizza place, right? I can just say, hey, Alexa, what's the pizza? You know, best pizza near me, right? Optimizing the website for the search will be like that next step in the SEO and optimization. 
getting on the uh, skill stores and building the apps where uh, that your customers can interact with, right? Like banks also starting kind of like catching up. I think Capital One, they have an app on their Alexa where you can like check your balance, uh, get information about de deposits, withdrawals, etc., about your account. So really, uh, you can be the first, like the playing field is open. You can be the first one, get ahead of the game, uh, before it starts again, before it's, it gets crowded with uh, your competitors. So uh, definitely a good time to get ahead of the game. Okay. Yeah. What are what are some things that maybe smaller brands can do to stand out, I guess, amongst their competitors or just to even dip their toes into this field? Because, you know, just thinking from my perspective, like voice UI seems like, well, how do we use that? It's just, right. you know, like some of the things you mentioned, like searching, and such obviously this makes sense are there other ways are there um they can build so businesses can build the skill for their customers even um for example i would look at the i mean it, it again will depend on the business right but i would look at the again different um like at the customer journey mm -hmm. and see where there might be a lot of friction uh currently happening maybe customers asking a lot of questions about the particular topic or they are calling with questions about certain thing, right? Can you turn, take that and turn it into the useful skill that they can use on the device and just like, instead of calling the support, ask the device. So maybe if you have like a extensive FAQ li library on the website, turn it into the skill so people, instead of frantically searching, they can just like speak in the natural language, right? And ask the question that, uh, they're looking for to clarify, um, and just also that can be one of the ways you can enhance the user experience. Well, so before we go off the topic of voice UI, we have a demo to show us. Yeah, so we, uh, my team put together this uh, quick fun demo for the um, untraditional industries uh, vlog. So we put together this um, demo skill on Alexa. Um, Alexa, open untraditional industry skill. Welcome to Untraditional Industries. Try asking, who was the first guest on the show? Or, when did the last episode come out? Who was the first guest on the show? Jim Schnorr of Went USA. What is the name? February 20th, 2020. What is the name of the host? Alex Villafranca. I've heard he's a pretty cool dude. <laughs> Who's the best co-host? I'm not paid enough to answer this question. <laughs> That's awesome. Stop. I'm not paid enough to answer this question. <laughs> Stop. Goodbye. That's so awesome. cool. Oh. That's great. Wow. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> you need to get one for the office. I know. <laughs> we gave you attitude. Uh, I think, so with the Alexa, um, Oh, I think we need to turn it off because it's going to be listening now. So with um, uh, Amazon Alexa devices, you you have to follow the guidelines of Alexa personalities. Yeah. She has to be like friendly and not confrontational. So since it's a demo, we could have just like, you know, programmed her to say whatever. But I'm, I wonder if it's going to go through if we submit it to the store. Yeah. We give you like a little attitude if we're going to accept it or not. <laughs> That's so cool. Very nice. Very nice. Awesome. Well, if you could give one piece of advice to an aspiring business leader, what would it be? Uh, so I would say start before you're ready. Um, and, uh, you know, advise it to the startup founders uh, just to, you know, build the products that are good enough and just launch. The time to market is so crucial and it's important to just get your product out there and start getting the market feedback, start selling it um, versus just spending time and energy polishing it up and getting it to the perfection because typically when you launch and you feel super confident about your product it usually means that you're already too late because yeah somebody already might beat you to the market so it's better to just get it to the good enough ship it and then iterate and polish it up as you go that's awesome and the final <laughs> most, important. most important question right. favorite chicken wing spot in buffalo all right, favorite chicken wing spot. Um, so I, I've been trying to eat healthy lately, but <laughs> if I were to cheat, um, I would definitely go for Lenovo 
uh, chicken wings. So my favorite, they have this really good barbecue, uh, like oven, oven baked chicken wings. Yeah. And those are just too I think that's a new one, Lenovo. Really yeah. Oh, yeah. They're really good. I know what you're talking about. I was at Duff's last weekend and someone said Lenovo was their favorite too, I think. Really? Or someone yes. brought up Lenovo recently. They're the best barbecue wings in yeah. Buffalo, I think. All right. And, sure. well... Lenovo, I'm expecting chicken, <laughs> free chicken wings for the shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tag them. Um, so, well, why, uh, also, why Buffalo? I mean, you're not originally from here, so... Yeah. Yeah, why did you choose Buffalo and why are you staying in Buffalo? Well, I've heard Buffalo has the yeah. best people, so... Yeah. <laughs> well, we that's why I came. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, I was, um, the first time I was um, in the U.S., I was in Niagara Falls and it was 2008 and I just, I really loved the, being so close, like having both, you know, being on the border with U.S. and Canada and just kind of like getting both countries for the price of one, so that's, I decided to come back and it's, I mean, Buffalo is home now, love it, yeah. very passionate to Buffalo tech community and just, you know, uh, being a part of this, uh, you know, change happening in the city. So, yeah, really, really glad that you know the chance landed me here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So happy to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, and happy to have you on the show. Thanks so much for joining us. That demo was so cool. So thanks for that. I appreciate it. And yeah, uh, yeah. thanks everyone for watching. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.